Population, Health and Environment Working Together Integrated population, health, environment projects are improving the lives of women and families around the world. The lives of women like Rukia. Like many rural women, Rukia faces challenges providing for her family and keeping her family healthy. And diminishing natural resources are making this more difficult. Rukia lives in a small agricultural village in Tanzania, which borders Sadani National Park. For many generations, coastal families have been dependent on fishing for food and income. But overfishing and the use of unsustainable fishing methods now threaten this way of life. In the inland villages around Sadani National Park, poor farming practices and recurrent drought make it hard for farmers to make a living and feed their families. And the small amount of fertile land outside of the park must be divided among the growing number of families who want to grow crops, making many plots too small to support a household. After providing for the household's immediate needs, such as food, water, fuel, and childcare, women like Rukia often have little time or resources available to access health services for themselves or their children. Basic health services that many women want, such as maternal and child health services, and access to family planning are out of their reach. For women who want to delay or space their pregnancies or don't want to have any more children, lack of family planning programs can result in early childbearing, unintended pregnancies, and larger than desired family sizes. Communities are affected too. Large families mean that the local population has grown, and with it so have the demands on local resources, including land, fuel wood, building materials, and fish. These challenges that women like Rukia face are all connected, making it difficult to address any one of the problems alone. Health, livelihoods, food security, environment and population are all important pieces of this puzzle. In response to these interrelated challenges, many organizations have developed integrated approaches that respond to the health, livelihood, and environment needs of communities. This approach is often called Population, Health, and Environment, or PHE. PHE initiatives use integrated approaches to improve access to health services, including voluntary family planning and reproductive health, while helping communities to manage natural resources and conserve the critical ecosystems on which they depend. The PHE approach has been tested by environmental and health organizations in diverse locations across multiple continents, and the dots on this map mark PHE projects conducted over the last several years. These projects have proven effective for improving the lives of people in a variety of ways. PHE projects often work with people beyond the reach of health systems in remote and hard to reach areas. They have proven to be more effective than single sector efforts, saving organizations and communities time. They are often more responsive to people's priority needs, thus gaining greater community support. And they often lead to greater involvement of men in health and women in environment and livelihood aspects of projects. Let's travel around the world to five projects and see how select results illustrate the benefits of the PHE approach. In southwestern Madagascar, Blue Ventures, a conservation organization working with remote rural communities to protect marine areas, has helped health services reach previously inaccessible and underserved communities. The villages in this area are extremely isolated and transportation and communication are great challenges. Blue Ventures began working on marine conservation in this area in 2003 promoting sustainable octopus fisheries, community-based aquaculture, and improved fishing practices. In the course of working closely with communities, Blue Ventures consistently heard from women about their health needs and in particular about the lack of availability of reproductive health services. At the same time, Blue Ventures, along with the community, worried about the long-term sustainability of their work in the face of the rapidly growing coastal population and the growing demand for marine resources. 
In response, Blue Ventures integrated health initiatives into their existing activities and established the area's first clinic providing women with a variety of health and family planning services. Recent data illustrate the high demand for services in this remote area. The graph shows that contraceptive use increased from only 10% before the project began to 55% by 2013. The Blue Ventures model of building on existing conservation programming to deliver health services allows both the health and conservation messages to reach a larger audience. This integration has also increased their conservation impacts. Through the clinics, the project has built stronger relationships with women and reached them with conservation messages and activities when before women were unlikely to attend local conservation meetings. This is important because women play a large role in the use of local resources and can be powerful partners for conserving them. In addition to increasing women's involvement in conservation, PHE projects have successfully increased men's involvement in family planning and reproductive health. In Ethiopia, the Gurage People's Self-Help Development Organization, known as GYPSIDO, integrated conservation and livelihood activities into the organization's reproductive health education and community-based family planning program. Gypsido compared results in their integrated PHE project area with an area where they were implementing only their reproductive health program. As the graph shows, husbands in the integrated PHE project areas were four times more likely to support use of family planning than husbands in the area which received only the reproductive health intervention. When men communicate with their wives and partners about using contraception or planning their next child, family planning use increases. In addition, the women in the integrated intervention areas were almost four times more likely to earn an income than the women in the reproductive health only areas and more than three times more likely to use energy saving stoves. Alternative income generation activities and energy saving stoves can decrease both the economic and time burden on women, improving their health and leading to more participation in household and community decision making. And with more time, income and a manageable family size, families can invest in health, food and education for each child, empowering the next generation. The population, health and environment approach can be more efficient and effective than single sector efforts. For example, in the Philippines, PATH Foundation Philippines, or PFPI, has tested whether there are more improvements in both coastal resource management and reproductive health outcomes by delivering these services in an integrated manner as opposed to delivering either alone. Community-based distributors of family planning supplies shared integrated messages about reproductive health and environmental management and youth volunteers and peer educators encouraged youth to be stewards of the environment and their sexual behaviors. In the PHE program site, youth were more likely to wait to have sex or if sexually active, use contraception compared with a site with reproductive health messages only. PFPI's PHE interventions have also led to increases in food security of rural communities. The communities where PFPI works are dependent on coastal and marine resources as a source of food and livelihoods. So PFPI has focused their central theme on managing marine resources and assuring people's access to an affordable and sustainable supply of food from the sea. Results show a greater decrease in the proportion of households dependent on fishing in PHE communities than in the resource management only communities. And the PHE communities showed more improvement in knowledge of the dangers of using cyanide and dynamite in fishing. 
many environmental organizations have found that meeting priority needs of communities by including health and livelihood interventions with their conservation programs increases the support of local communities for biodiversity conservation. The Jen Goodall Institute, JGI, uses this approach in the villages around Gombe National Park in western Tanzania, where Jen Goodall first began her chimpanzee behavioral research more than 50 years ago. Over time, the forest around the park had been cut down and seriously degraded, largely due to an influx of refugees from neighboring countries. The population had grown more rapidly than the land and natural resources could support placing increasing pressure on the resident endangered chimpanzees. JGI's community-centered conservation program initially focused on protecting chimpanzees and their habitat by establishing tree nurseries and creating wood lots to slow down the rate of trees being cut down around the park. As they worked with the local villagers, JGI staff learned more about the daily challenges facing the communities, including the desperate need for health and sanitation services. It became clear that long-lasting conservation could only be achieved by also addressing these more immediate needs. JGI was able to mobilize its existing networks to train community-based educators to provide HIV AIDS prevention and treatment, family planning, counseling and education, and reproductive health services. Reaching over 200,000 people with family planning messaging and resulting in over 9,000 people adopting a family planning method. By focusing on health and other livelihood needs, JGI has built trust and strong partnerships with the communities leading to significant conservation gains, including more than 440,000 acres of community land set aside for conservation. We have highlighted just a few examples, but many PHE projects have demonstrated similar success in addressing complex and connected challenges related to population, health, livelihoods, food security, and environment. Back in her village in Tanzania, Rukia and her community have benefited greatly from the USAID-funded Pwani project implemented by the University of Rhode Island's Coastal Resources Center. The Pwani project integrates population, health, and environment in the area where Rukia lives. As a peer educator, Rukia educates other community members about the connections between their health and the environment. She demonstrates and teaches women ways to generate sustainable sources of income, and she helps couples plan their families, choose the timing and spacing of their pregnancies, and have the number of children they want. Rukia has improved the health and economic prospects of herself, her family, and her community while protecting the environment upon which they all depend. We've seen examples of how communities are benefiting from the PHE approach. But these projects are reaching a relatively small number of the many families around the world facing these complex and interrelated challenges. Increased support and commitment from policymakers, implementers, funders, and local decision makers will ensure the sustainability and growth of the integrated PHE approach and will improve many more lives.